everyone. It has been a while since I have seen you all. Uh, it feels good to be sitting in front of the camera again, but I thought that I would sit down finally after months and kind of explain to you where I've been and update you on my life and kind of give you a bit of an idea of why I've been away from the camera for so long. Um, and really just summarize what's been happening for the course of 2016 and now the first two weeks of 2017. So what I've been doing for the last several months or basically all of 2016 has been studying. And what have I been studying for? Well, as you may know, I have been studying for the USMLE Step 1 board exam. But for those of you who don't know, most Caribbean schools now require their medical students to take a sort of pre-qualifying board exam, which is called the NBME CBSE, before you're allowed to actually write or take the USMLE Step 1 exam. So the NBME CBSE stands for National Board of Medical Examiners and then Comprehensive Basic Science Exam. So you may have heard of the NBME, that's where a lot of people get practice uh, forms of exams for uh, you know, preparing for the US Assembly Step 1, you can pay for their mock self-assessments self online, um, but the CBSE is different. The CBSE is sponsored by your school and you actually have to formally register to take it and you have to take it formally again at a Prometric testing center. So you can't actually just take it and, and buy it and take it on your computer. So the CBSE is made of four blocks of 46 questions each and you have I think an hour and three minutes to complete each block and then in between the first and second block you have a 15 minute break where you can go and you know eat your food or whatever and leave the testing room and then come back. So the whole idea is to facilitate a USMLE uh, type environment where you can uh, build your test taking abilities under the same high pressure environment and then you can get your score back and see whether or not you have passed and got a, a good enough score so that you can actually be eligible to take the USMLE Step 1 exam. And so I think it depends on the school what you actually have to score to be able to pass that exam and then get a permit to write the USMLE, uh, but usually I think it sits around the 70% mark. So unfortunately what most students don't know before they enroll at a Caribbean med school because uh, a lot of times the admin kind of try and keep this on the down low is that if you fail your CBSC exam X amount of times you will be expelled from school. So sometimes it's not that hard to get by in the first or second year of Caribbean medical schools um, because of the way they do testing and sometimes it can be easier to get by with you know cramming and things like this, but it all catches up to you when you have to study for this uh, pre-qualifying board exam. So for example, my school you can take it four times, otherwise you'll be expelled. And after the first and second time you take it, the third or yeah, the third and fourth time you have to score I think like 15 or 20 points higher um, in order to be able to actually move on and get your permit to take the step one. So if you guys have been following me for a while, in April I moved from the Caribbean to Chicago and that was right after I finished my last semester of basic sciences, so last semester of second year. And then I had a four month uh, semester in Chicago. And then at the end of that four month semester, I actually moved back to Vancouver in Canada to live with my parents so that I could uh, finish studying for this exam. And then I was just planning on taking it all in Vancouver. So originally I had planned to take this exam in the middle or end of October, but by the time I actually had decided to register for the exam, I actually didn't realize because I didn't get very, very much information about this, but uh, you have to actually book the exam or register for the exam several weeks in advance. So the earliest that I could book that exam for was mid to the end of November. So as you can imagine, that was really frustrating because I had been studying for months, I was totally burnt out, I was really burning the wig from both ends and I was exhausted and I didn't want to keep studying, I just wanted to take this exam, get it over with so that I could take step one and move on with my life and start rotations. So for the first two weeks of November and a little bit uh, near the end of October, I was really starting to fizzle out, I wasn't able to focus much, I was having a really hard time getting myself to be motivated to study every day. So by the time my test rolled around on November 16th, um, I was dying to take it but I also felt like I just wasn't there mentally. So after I took it, I had to wait two weeks to get my score back. So then the two weeks went by, I waited patiently, and I ended up getting the email a day early telling me what my score was. And so I was really nervous to check my score, and I just wasn't sure how I did. The exam, when I took it, felt like it was really difficult and really vague compared to all the UWorld questions I was doing. And so, as you can imagine, I wasn't too surprised when I opened the email and it said that I had failed by 
two points. And let me tell you, reading that email sucked so bad. I was so upset. I just wanted to move on with my life. Like I said, I had a whole schedule set out for when I wanted to start my rotations in January, and it just seemed like this big behemoth of an exam was kind of dumped on my shoulders, and I was overwhelmed, and I just got really anxious and upset. So I had a good cry, and I basically lied around bemoaning my life for the next week and a half. In the end though, that ended up kind of being a blessing in disguise just because I would rather have failed by two points and had the chance to up my score and study for the next month and a half extra before step one than barely passed, taken step one a month or two later, and scored on the lower scale of the spectrum. So immediately I registered for another retake NBME CBSE exam for January and I studied for the first couple weeks of December before I went on a family vacation to Finland for Christmas and um, at that point I was still really kind of feeling burnt out like I needed a break and of course I had it in my head that I was going to study and do X amount of questions over the holidays and I didn't really do any of them. So I got back on the 1st of January or December 31st or something like that and I was like okay I'm going to focus as much as I can for the next two weeks and I did and my exam was yesterday and I will let you know how that goes when I get my scores back but that's basically what I've been doing from September until now I've been studying for this same pre-qualifying exam and I'm hoping that the scores come back better this time so that I can reg register for step one and actually just take it and get it out of the way. So that way I can start rotations and actually feel like I'm becoming a doctor again and I can have a life again and I can make videos. But up until now I have kind of put the YouTube stuff and most of the social media other than Twitter on the side and just, you know, giving it a rest because right now clearly what I need to focus on is school. That being said, I thought it was important to make a video about this. At first, when I found out that I had failed that exam, I was really down on myself and I thought, well, who am I to be making these YouTube videos and telling other people um, you know, how they should study in med school and all this stuff, but the reality is that med school is really difficult and it's hard to pass exams sometimes and boards are kind of this monster that every med student has to face. and. And I know I didn't fail my step one, and I know I'm not going to, at least I hope I, I, I'm not going to, and I don't have that mindset that I could. Um, but this is something that we all go through, and I think it's important for you guys to know that, you know, despite what I'm doing and making these videos, I still struggle with school as well. And I only failed two of my shelf exams during the basic sciences, uh, so it feels weird to, you know, go through this whole process of failing a really important exam as compared with you know, a minor basic science exam, but I also think it gave me this opportunity to grow and, you know, build my skills, and the fact is that over the last two years, I may not have been the best student. You know, there were definitely exams where I crammed before and the material that I should have known really well or hammered in really well didn't stick, and so now over the past of, or the course of the last 12 months, there have been a lot of concepts that I've actually had to just teach myself again as if I'm learning them for the first time. And I know a lot of you might be wondering, well, how can you possibly spend, you know, almost a year studying for one exam? And the unfortunate thing is that that's, like, it's really hard, but that's what a lot of Caribbean med students do, and that's a lot of uh, what a lot of IMG students uh, end up doing because they either didn't learn the material well enough or they weren't taught it well enough or they just weren't as dedicated and they had never been um, in, an, in a, an environment where they had to focus so act like focus on their academics so seriously and you know this being for a number of reasons either you know um, their school let them in without many credits in the sciences for example me I had basically no history uh, in science so this was the first time I had ever gotten myself uh, in a situation where I really really had to focus and a number of other reasons so right now I can tell you that probably a solid half of my classmates are in the same boat as me. They either failed the NBME CBSE the first time or they haven't even taken it and they're still studying. And my message to you guys is to learn from my mistake and don't study as long as I have for this one exam. 
I really think it's so integral that you utilize the first one to four months and I'm not going to say any less than that because I feel like coming from an IMG background or a Caribbean school you really do want to put in the extra time needed more than the two months that an American medical student would take to study for the, for the step one exam. Um, but utilize those four months as best as you can because after you hit month three or four you really start to burn out. And the things that you taught yourself or reviewed in month one and month two, you start to forget by month three and month four. And then month five and month six, if you keep going, you're going to keep having this whole cycle that repeats itself of things that you're learning and things that you're forgetting. And I know that studying for boards, you really are supposed to remember everything, but that's just not realistic when you're not applying it every day. So now that it's the beginning of 2017 and it's almost been a year that I've been studying for this exam, it's just like I want to pull my hair out every day. I really have to schedule breaks and two weeks off and different chunks of time if I have to keep going like this because my brain is just, it feels like it's going to expl explode. I feel like I have no personal life. I feel like I don't have time to do anything fun and when I do fun things, sometimes I feel guilty because I feel like I should be studying. And then you go through this, you know, cycle of seeing things and studying them and then you haven't seen them for a while so you look at them again and then you don't remember them and it stresses you out and especially for the students who suffer with anxiety or depression, this is just a horrible environment uh, that you're going to get your, you're, you're going to get your head in a really bad mental space. So moral of the story, learn from my mistake and try and be able to pass your NBME CVSE exam within the first four months after you finish second year. So that first four months of dedicated study time that you have. So that that way you're not studying for step more than five or six months, max. So the second thing that I would recommend would be to start UWorld right away. That was one of the other mistakes that I made. Um, I was doing Kaplan and USMLERX for a while. Kaplan is a little bit more like UWorld. Uh, it's a lot more detailed, I think, and it has a lot of maybe excessive detail. So I would say that for you know first and second year when you're actually um, studying for your shelf exams. Um, and USMLERX is great, but it's also a lot easier than UWorld, unfortunately. So I had kind of tricked myself into thinking I was in a great place all summer because I was doing really well on USMLERX. And then in September when I started UWorld, I realized, whoa, okay, there are actually a lot of little details that I didn't think I needed to know or that I learned and I forgot. So this is going to be a long process. So if you combine my two pieces of advice, you know, study early, get it all done within the first couple of months so that you don't have to slowly burn out and watch yourself kind of um, burning all the wax of your candle to the end. And also start with UWorld right away, even if it means doing UWorld um, over, again, twice or three times. But the worst thing that you can do is at the beginning of your dedicated study period, Tell yourself, you know, I have a lot of time because a lot of these schools don't actually give you a limit on how long you can study for the USMLE because they want you to do well. And then you tell yourself, okay, well, I can, you know, only study this many days a week and I can take this much time off and I don't need to focus that much because that will just perpetuate this horrible cycle of learning, forgetting, relearning, and forgetting. So that is what I wanted to update you guys on today. Uh, I'm sorry that have, I've been away for a while, but hopefully things will you know, get better from here and you'll be able to hear from me more often. But I also just thought it was important to connect with you guys and let you know that I am struggling and I know many of you are probably struggling and that's normal. And I think sometimes we see people in med school on social media um, or people who've already become doctors and it looks glamorous and everything seems great and you know people are so smart and they don't fail exams and um, I know that you know it can be stressful and I see that sometimes and it stresses me out because I'm like why aren't I like that and why aren't I you know fast and why can't I learn things as well as I want them to or want myself to but I think really that that's how the majority of us feel so I know that I will be successful one day and I'm going to do great on the step one and when I do maybe you know I'll look back on these videos and I'll say well I struggled and and then you can look at it and be like she made it this far but she had a hard time and she failed her CVSE and so on and so forth at least you know like that's what my dream is so um, I will leave you guys there and hopefully I will see you soon but I'm not going to commit to making a video at any specific date so I wish you guys the best of luck and for those of you who are in second year now in their last semester who are starting to study for step 
I wish you the best of luck and have fun with first aid and do you world. So see you guys next time. Bye.